mighty name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the spirit of murder. We rebuke the spirit of murder. Santa Muerte, Santa Muerte, out! Jesus, come yep. out of him. You're coming out. Come out of him. Yep. Let him go. Yep. Let him go. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus, let him go. Jesus Christ. Come on. Out. Hold thy peace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, cover all brothers right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, 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 all of them coming out right now. Out of me, 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 all right well my name is Alaciano Ramirez I'm 27 uh, my background is uh, I used to run with politics because my pops is locked up and from the age of 14 to 19, that's when he, uh, he entered my life. And at that time, I was just a young kid searching for uh, attention. And so at that time, he just, he taught me a new way of life, you know, the street life and hanging with homeboys from the, the penitentiary all the time, cooking up dope. Uh, so I learned at a, a very young age, man, just to like one, one race and hate others, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so, Cooking up dope, slanging in and out of town. Uh, many a times, uh, many situations, man. There's there's been times where I thought I wasn't gonna make it home. Uh, and and about 2013, I got caught up in a, in a drug trafficking case. And my pops, man, he he took the blame for it. He signed for my time and everything, and he told me to get my life right. Well, at that time, man, he introduced the Santa Muerte to my mom. My my pops would pray to it. And he was telling my mom, oh, it's gonna make uh, it's gonna make the prison time go away, you know. And I asked the Santa Muerte one time in my whole life. I just asked it to, uh, to protect me. And uh, I went to church that following week, man. And God clearly spoke to me, man. He said not to put a false idol before him, only to praise him. And it checked me, you know. So uh, I started leaning on God as much as I could, man. And that, that spiritual realm, man, it got, it got real deep with me, man. I was, I was fighting demons all the time. I was seeing demons that would hold me down. Uh, I, would smoke, I would smoke weed, I was in and out of church, you know, back and forth, double-minded. I didn't really know the Lord, I didn't really know uh, His power, what He had. And uh, it just started getting deep, man. It was, it, I was living in, in a dark hole. Uh, our cars would break down, uh, we were poor, the house was falling apart. We had people putting witchcraft on us. My mom would put witchcraft back on them. Um, so I seen a lot of demonic things, man. My mom standing over me at night with her hair in front of her face. And the next morning I'd wake her up in a room, like, what was you doing in the room? And she was like, that wasn't me, I wasn't in the room. And she had no, no memory of, of that at all. So uh, one day, man, uh, this demon came to see me in my sleep and it was telling me that I was never gonna get rid of it. And uh, it told me to kill myself. But when it was saying, kill myself, kill myself, I heard it in both my ears at the same time. And I called a friend from church and I asked him to come out and bless my home. And uh, he came out the next day, his grandma and his grandma, uh, grandpa, and they started blessing the home, man. Started cleaning out the home with the blood of Jesus, uh, praying over false images. They prayed over the Santa Muerte, man. And uh, at the time I was scared, you know. 
And uh, later that night, man, uh, I, I went to sleep and I heard screaming. And I thought I, I thought I was tripping, man. I woke up, and so uh, I went back to bed. Well, the next morning, bro, uh, my mom had everything in a box. The Santa Muerte, the statues, the spell books, the fruits, the cigarettes. And she was like, get rid of it. And uh, I was like, what? I was tripped out, man, because God just blessed the home. You know what I'm saying? And I called the homeboy from church. And I was like, man, thank you, bro. Well, later on that day, we had a security camera. And my mom pulled up. She just got off of work. And she was standing outside. And when she was standing outside, I was like, man, this ain't right, you know? So I had all that, that stuff she told me to get rid of on the counter. I went outside and I was like, what's up? And she didn't want to say nothing, man. I had to like dig it out of her. And uh, so finally she broke down. She was like, yeah. She was like, last night uh, I woke up screaming. I, I was trying to scream for help. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, yeah, that, uh, that Santa Muerte came out of the statue as a figure and grabbed her by the ankles and started pulling her into the middle of the bed. And said, why'd your son bring something holy into the house? He was only supposed to praise me. And when she went to scream for help, it covered her mouth. And uh, when she thought of Jesus, she said, a light struck it. And uh, when she told me that, man, I was excited. Uh, I, got, I grabbed the box and my homeboy Avery, he just pulled up, man. And I was walking out and everything in the restroom window, you could hear everything collapse off the wall. That spirit was mad. And uh, so I threw it away. And when I threw it away, it clinged to me. I wasn't right with God. I wasn't clean. I was double-minded still. I was still kicking it with the homeboys. Uh, I would go to church on and off. So for the next four years, man, it was, it was just dark, you know. I was paranoid all the time. I couldn't sleep. Uh, my family thought I was on dope. I was losing weight. I couldn't eat nothing. Uh, back in May of 2017, May 26th, uh, I was real sick, man. I, I kept going to the hospital for that whole month. And uh, I kept telling the doctors, man, I got stomach pain. I got, I got back pain. My kidneys hurt. I can't eat nothing. I felt like I had cancer. Uh, they would run these tests on me, man. And nothing, nothing would pop up. They couldn't find nothing. They thought it was crazy. They gave me morphine. I was still bought up. Well, I just got out of the hospital uh, later that day. And uh, I was telling my mom, like, man, I'm going to die. Like, I feel it. I feel the spirit of death on me. And uh, so that day, man, or that couple nights before, my brother would always pray with me. And uh, I was sitting outside. My hair was all crazy. I looked bummy. That demon just fully took over. My brother walked up. He said, man, you want to pray? I said, nah, man, I'm, I'm good. I left. And I just cried out to God, man. I said, God, if you're, if you're real, if you could show me a power from you, like never before, man, I, I'll give you my life. I just don't want to feel sick no more. And uh, man, it's crazy, man. I had like 15% uh, on my phone. And it was a 20 minute drive downtown uh, at this place called The Venue. And uh, I used my GPS to get there. And right when I pulled up, my phone died. And I still called God out. I was like, okay, you got me here, but show me something. So I got out. I seen Brother Brian and, and Brother Paul. They walked in and, and immediately when I went in, I was nervous. I hated everybody there. Uh, the enemy started talking to me. He's like, man, just leave. It's not going to work. And I was like, I was, about, I was hesitating, you know. I was, I was standing, standing against the wall and Right when I was about to walk out, Brother Paul walked up. He said, man, I don't know you, but God has something for you tonight, man. He told me to tell you to, uh, to stay. So I was like, all right. So I'm battling an enemy in my, in my mind, not knowing it's him. I'm thinking it's my own thoughts. And uh, and it was, a, it was a powerful moment, man. Uh, Brother Brian, he was praying. And he said, man, if there's, if there's pain in your uh, body, place your hands where it hurts. And I placed my hand on my stomach. And uh, Brother Paul and some, some other gentlemen, they walked up. They started praying, they laid their hands on my stomach. My stomach started shaking. And right then I was like, man, there's something in me. I don't know what it is, but there's something in me. So uh, I waited till I was the last person in that, in that church, man. And uh, Brother Brian walked up. I started walking backwards. I didn't want, I didn't want to be near him. I was, I was nervous, I was real sick. I couldn't look at him in his eyes and he kept telling me, what's wrong, bro? And I was like, man, I feel sick. I feel like I'm in a deep sleep. I can't wake up. I don't know who I am. I feel like killing people. Uh, I feel like killing myself. I, I can't eat nothing. I didn't say nothing about the witchcraft. So they started praying. He was like, do you know God or do you really want to know him? I said, I really want to know him. So they started praying. I started laughing. I was like closing my eyes laughing and then I wake up out of it. And then uh, he was like, I rebuked the spirit of mockery. I still didn't know what was going on, man. And then I felt my face mugging him and I would like shake myself out of it. And then uh, the Holy Spirit called it out, man. He said, the Santa Muerte. 
right when he did that, bro, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, my mom got into it, I got into it too. All I asked was it was it to uh, protect me. And Brother Brown was like, man, we're gonna pray again. I said, all right. So that that part I asked God to show me in the shower when I was praying out to him, man, he did, bro, straight up. They were praying, the Holy Spirit fell on me, bro, and I, I fell back, boom, straight on my back, man. It felt like I had angels carrying me down. And I was paralyzed, I could hear everything going on. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I had to throw up. I, I can feel it like, like a tug of war for my soul, man. It just kept going up and shooting back down. And, and in my mind, I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And like 15, 20 minutes, my, my body went numb. Like your arm goes to sleep. Like that from head to toe, inside out, top to bottom. And I couldn't even speak, man. The, the spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit in me, bro. Like it fell on me, fell on me so hard. I couldn't even talk. And I kept telling him, like, man, why am I numb? Why am I numb? Brother Brian said, uh, God is healing you. Do you accept that in the name of Jesus? I said, yeah. And uh, so they picked me up, put me in a chair. I was numbed out, I'm trying to rest. 10 minutes into resting, man, I stood up and the anointing left. But when I stood up, I stood up straight. And immediately I hit my knees, bro, bawling. Said, God is real, God is real. Why? Because I didn't feel no more pain in my back, kidney, stomach. I could stretch out all the way. And I was just bawling, bro. And uh, I stood up, man, I just kept thanking God. Kept thanking God, kept thanking God, man. And uh, so from there on out, Brother Brian and Brother Paul said, we'll be back in three months. We want to hear your testimony. I said, all right. Man, I was on fire for God, man. Like, I just wanted to know more about him. Kept, kept reading as much as I could. Just filled with joy I could eat. That night when I went home, I ran inside my, my cuñada's house, my sister-in-law's house. And before, they see me walking around hurting. So when they see me running in, they were tripped out. And my mom was there at the time. She was in the kitchen. And I was like, Mom, they cast the demons out of me. We pray for you. You know, and they just got done cooking out. So I stacked my, my plate up with carne asada and pollo. I smashed out my food, man. And it, man, it was just, it's crazy, man. And uh, So anyways, I'm still on my journey with God. I'm fighting, I'm going in, staying in the word. Brother Paul's checking up on me, keeping me up, holding me accountable. And uh, the enemy starts hitting me from every direction, through people, through my family. And uh, at the time, man, uh, somebody that I knew, uh, my brother at the time, we ended up kidnapping this lady. And uh, I knew, man, I instantly knew it was it was the enemy attacking me. And uh, God said, you're about to shed innocent blood. And the fire that was convicting me within, that was the Holy Spirit, man, and I was scared. I've never felt anything like that in my life. Scared, man. So my brother, he's behind me in another car, and I'm praying, I'm like, God, just, just stop it. You know what I'm saying? You got, you're God, you can do anything. And um, it, it, it ended up happening, you know? I remember pulling up in a car wash and I just started praying for the woman. I started praying, started rebuking the enemy, started rebuking the enemy out, out of my brother. Pulled back up with my brother. He rolled his window down, he was mad. I seen the veins in his head, he was mad. He was like, man, I let her go. I let her go, man, I let her go. And I was like, man, thank you, God, thank you. But, but for me, opening that door, it brought legions back. So August 26th of 2017, man, I met Brother Brian and Brother Paul again. And they cast the legions out of me. I'm talking about lion roars. It was just all bad. But I confessed out. So I believe the enemy will hold you. It will hold you bound if you hold it in. If you don't confess it out, you can't be set free. So I joined the, the Kingdom Music in uh, Abilene, Texas. I stayed out there for four months and rebelled. I rebelled against God so hard. I was scared. I would see change come and I, I get afraid. So I left, came back home. I was doing good still in the word, but I was still feeling void on the inside. Like I was running from God. And uh, one day, uh, Brother Brian and them, they hit me up again, come back to the home, come back to the home. I was like, all right. So my alibi was, all right, I'm gonna go kill my enemy and go back to Texas. And that'd be my alibi. So one day, uh, the enemy was just working on me, man, and I let my guard down. I ended up going to my enemy's job, and I was trying to get him, but I seen the grace of God on him. And the enemy disappeared out of the store, man, and my homeboy at the time was like, man, he was pulling on my shoulder, like, man, you tripping, bro, come on. So I went back to the home, but I didn't confess out what I'd done. So when I got around holy people and anointed people, I was nervous. I couldn't eat. I was scared. I wanted to leave. So Brother Paul again, he put up on me one day and he's like, man, you acting funny, bro. Like, what's up? And later on, I'm just kind of like trying to build up my strength to tell him. 
And I end up telling him, confessing to him, like, yeah, man, I tried to kill somebody. And, and then come out here. And then he, God delivered me in the back of the U-Haul, man. We was helping Brother Brian move. And uh, I rebelled again. I kept running from God. I left the game, went back to Oklahoma, and, and uh, just double mining again, bro. Partying, drinking, smoking weed, trying to rap in the studio. It just didn't feel right. I felt God's hand like upon me, like I would try to do it, and I just felt like I wasn't made for that no more. I was made different. Like He's got a different garment for me, and I kept pushing him away, like no, I ain't ready, I ain't ready. But my spirit kept telling me, yeah, this is for you. So. Uh, down the line, man, Brother Paul, he would always check up on me, man, what you doing, bro, what you doing? And in my heart, I'm like, man, I know I'm living wrong, I want God, but my flesh is strong too, and I'm like, man, I'm cool, you know, and he ended up casting demons out of me again. I would, I would go home, and that portal would still be there. I had homeboys that would pray pray for me with that scent I'm with it, and he would bring it right back. And uh, like eight months ago, man, I was telling Brother Paul, like, man, I called him one day, I said, bro, I feel like I'm gonna die, like, I feel real sick. And he was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah. So he's like, you got some, uh, you got some headphones? Put them headphones in. And he just started commanding them. I confessed it out, I, I renounced that in the name of Jesus, things that I was doing. And uh, it let a few demons go a little bit. And a couple days went by, I get to him, Brother Paul, now, bro, I still got him. I know when I got him, I still got him. And at the time he was like, man, you need to get rid of that pistol. So I was like, all right. I rid of it and from nine o'clock to two o'clock, my brother was, going in on, you know what I'm saying, by the mighty hand of God, man, he was casting these demons out, and he got the root of it this time, he asked it to reveal itself, and the Santa Muerte came out speaking, the Santa Muerte, and he's like, what are you doing there, and she's like, generation curse, and I was hurting, coughing up blood, it was punching on me, it was turning the phones off, and then a couple of days went by, Brother Paul checked up on me, and I was hurt, you could tell in my face I was hurting, and then it made me rebel again. It, uh, it consumed me up, and I blocked everybody. I didn't want nothing to do with God. I just started drinking again, got depressed. The house felt dark. Every time I would come home, I didn't want to be there. It was just depressing, man, and I ran from God again. And this time I got denied by two pastors, and it hurt me in my faith, man. But I believe God was telling me to stop putting my faith in man and put my faith in God, and he'll show me what he can do. So I started fasting, I try, I try to pick myself up again, I try to pick up my cross. I was wounded, and I kept crying out to God, man, I need you, man, why am I going through this? Like, why why you keep putting me through this? So I fasted, somebody was helping me fast, we stood in agreement, and I was about to break my fast, man, and she was like, no, hold up. She was like, just wait. I was like, all right, so I went to lay down, and I started reaching out to Brother Paul again, man, and they started giving me confirmation of things, confirmation. And then uh, I told him what was going on and how I felt and where I was in my walk. He didn't judge me at all, man. He was like, he just kept loving on me, just kept loving on me. And then he, he was like, man, let me call you back. I was like, all right. And not even five, six minutes later, man, he called back. Like, man, I just had a vision of you getting delivered in Miami. And I'm tripped out. I'm like, what? Man, you tripping, bro. Like, I feel like I'm being gullible, you know? And uh, he's like, yeah, man. He. Uh, was just preaching to me. He, he was building me up. I started feeling the fire again. I was like, all right. And he's like, yeah, man, I, I, I'm linked up with Brother Level, man. You should check him out. He sent me the link. I started doing my little investigation on him. And uh, I was just drawn to it, man. It was just like God handpicked me out, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and threw me in. Like, You know what I'm saying? Even though the, nobody wants to hang with you, he's like, I'm going to use that. You know what I'm saying? You went through all these dark, dark things. I'm going to use that. You play the witchcraft, I'm going to use that. You ran with the politics, I'm going to use that. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm on my journey here, man. It took me two whole days to get here. I was nervous. I was scared. Last moment, I wanted to back out. I was smoking cigarettes. I probably went through like half a pack. I'm scared. And I kept thinking, God, this is not going to work. This ain't going to work, man. Like, what if I go and it, nothing happens? And, you know, I was just doubting. I was scared. And on my way there, man, I just kept on God. I said, man, what, what little faith I have, man. Please use it, you know what I'm saying, and, and forgive me, you know. And uh, hey, man, when I <laughs> when the Uber dropped me out, one of the brothers said uh, when I walked in, he said that I said we're here, you know what I'm saying. So immediately, you know, they were anointed and they seen the legions in me. And when I got around them brothers, man, I felt the anointing on them. I, I'm ready to dip, you know what I'm saying. I want to be around them. 
they tell me they relaxed, they kept loving on me, and I was just like, man, you know, like the feeling you about to get jumped, and just like, man, it'd be over with in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And I just kept telling myself, man, you here, man, it's, it's almost over, it's almost over, just hang on. And uh, I got in the truck, and I could hear them, I could hear the demons jump out the truck, just jump out the truck. So I was telling my brother, like, hey, man, like, like lock the door, then, you know, they're telling me to jump out. And, you know, I'm pretty sure they were praying for me, you know, they just didn't want to, like, trip me out or anything. And we got to uh, the, the one of the beaches or the something over here, man, and I just started feeling, like, more relaxed and, like, you know, trying to loosen up. And I just kept, like, reaching out to God, like, man, just help me, you know what I'm saying? And I would distance myself and, like, pray. And then here they come living on me, and I'm like, man, all right, you know, I'm getting nervous again. My hands are sweaty. I'm tripping. And we got in this circle, man. Everybody was just praying, thanking God. And I was just confessing out, you know, confessing out, praying and thanking Him I made it. And man, the craziest, craziest uh, exorcism I ever had out of five exorcisms, you know. Uh, this is the most hardest one that I ever been through, man. And, and, and God didn't forsake me, He never let go. As much as the dark road I was on, the valley of death I was in, he pulled me straight out, bro. And man, it was crazy, man. I knew it, you know what I'm saying? I knew it was gonna manifest. And brothers started laying hands on me. They started praying. I remember getting real mad and, and, and my body flexing up and I just seen red. Deliverance, we rebuke the spirit of murder. We rebuke the spirit Santa of murder. Santa Muerte out. Santa Muerte out. Santa Muerte out. out. You know how like you look, in, look into the sun, you see the light, I seen red, and I could hear him pray for me, and everything in my stomach was tightening up, that demon didn't want to let me go, you know, and it, it, it had to go in the name of Jesus Christ, man, that thing had to come out, you know, I, it put up a fight, but at the end, God won the war and the battle, and uh, I was laid out, man, they, they called the paramedics and the, and, and, uh, the police, man, because the people were tripped out. And I don't even remember that, you know what I'm saying? I just kept waking up out of it and I see more brothers praying over me and I'd go back into this deep sleep that had me in and I just kept getting mad and I black out and then by the grace of God man he just sent the right angels at the right time you know what I'm saying he was going in he was getting me through the deepest pit of hell man he pulled me out you know what I'm saying and you can only do that through the uh through the Lord Jesus Christ man and man it was crazy you know it's crazy experience anybody that messes with the Santa Muerte Santeria, any witchcraft, Freemason, whatever, man. That's, that's a false religion. That's a false way, man. That's a lie from the pits of hell, man. It has strongholds over my family, generation curses over my family. When I go home, by the grace of God, man, we got to put in work, man, and putting it down for the kingdom of God, man. And, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Denounce him right now. All of them coming out right now. Out of me. Out of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of me. Out of me. Out Out of me. 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 Out it's a Come on, brother. Out of him right now. You got to go. Brian, spirit out of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out now. Out right now. Out of him right now.
I need everybody online to come into agreement. Hallelujah. Deliverance. Deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. 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 Thank Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Hallelujah. Out right now. Out. Yes. Murder. Rebuke the Satan, Lord. Murder. Murder. Out. Jesus. Out right now. Stronghold. Out. Come on, come on, come on. Deep root. Out. You've been lying to him too long. You've been trying to have him kill himself. You've been having him doubt himself. You've been having him feel shameful. And you're going to stop now because he's going to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ is real. Y'all believe in Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. He Ouch. can deliver anybody. Ouch. He delivered all of us from the pits of hell. Hallelujah. And today, we Ouch. preach in repentance and remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Unashamed of that name. Hallelujah. For there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for deliverance today, my Lord Jesus. Right Hallelujah. This is true testimony. Young kid, 14, learning. Learning from the OGs on the block how to cook up men. I see what it does to people. It messes them up. And the mind destroys the body. They don't know who they are no more. They get high because they love that lie. It's all a lie, that crack. Heroin, meth, whatever you take, drink, alcohol, whatever, it's all a lie. Hallelujah. When you come down from it, then what? You start to feel numb, you start to feel the emptiness. Where's God at? You need the Holy Spirit to fill you in. Hallelujah. That way you don't feel that void. Hallelujah. Hey, it took me seven years. I was fighting witchcraft. I never gave up. I kept pushing. No matter, no matter how many times I fell, I got up. Come on. God, I want you. I need you in my life. I don't feel right. I feel empty. I feel Come sick. Hallelujah. Them demons have me contagious. Fed up. Just a couple of hours ago, I got delivered, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm, hey, I'm here to tell you, stop living this life. Stop smoking them cigarettes. Stop hitting that crack pipe. Hallelujah. Get your mind right. Get your mind right, sis. You know Jesus loves you. Come on, sis. Hallelujah. You are the daughter of a king, hallelujah. Daughter of the most high. Thank you. You worthy. He loves you. You worthy, sis. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to everybody over here that don't want it. Don't they don't want to hear nothing we gotta say. Because some demons is in your ear. Don't listen. There is no God. Let me tell you today, there is a God. Amen. And you're gonna meet him face to face. Not with your homeboy sitting next to you by yourself. Straight up. Straight up. I came out all the way from Oklahoma, a leap of faith, just to tell you this. By the grace of God, I'm here. Hey, it felt just like home, bro. I was comfortable. I was in the zone, bro, and loving on the brothers that, you know, still doing their thing. They respected it too, man. They were reaching out to us, like, man, y'all was doing the right thing, keep going. And we loved on them and kicked it with them, you know. And it was just all love, you know. It, it was a beautiful thing to see, man. It's just. Your, your home and where you stay, it, it may seem bad, but bro, I see a lot of good in people, bro. You know what I'm saying? I see angels over them. We were praying for them. We were ministering, preaching to them, dropping testimonies. And brothers were coming out like, man, I believe you. I'm going through the same thing. So your testimony can save thousands upon thousands, bro. Straight up. Right now in the name 